We have a lot of people popping on, and we're super excited for today. We have a very special guest. We've got uh, a training that we're calling Abundance Now with Kofi Anderson. Come and on. so it's going to be amazing. It's going to be so good. We're pumped to um, for you to meet him, hear his journey, his story, and also hear some of his marketing brilliance, some of his, you know, what he did throughout his journey to create the major success that he has created. Uh, but Megan, what, what, are, what would you like to say to kick things off? Oh, well, I... I'm excited. I'm so thrilled to have Kofi here with us talking about his journey. Maybe we might even get to hear him sing. Come on it. now. I mean, <laughs> come on with it, Let's right? Go. Come on with Let's come go. On He's with here. It. He's here. He's right behind that well, plane. I see. We got people from Frisco, Texas. Hello. Hey, Mississippi. Awesome. Look at all y'all from all over the place tuning in here and now. So Texas in the house. I love it. It's amazing. So it's going to be an awesome training. Definitely. Well, I think that we should uh, kick it off in prayer and seal the atmosphere. Megan, yeah. what do you think? Let's do this Let's thing. Do all right. Heavenly yes, Father, God, God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, um, for what you're doing in and through every single person's life, God, here listening live on Facebook, live on Zoom, those who are on the replay, God. I thank you, Lord, that we are for you and those who are for you, that nothing can come against us. So God, I just thank you, Lord, for what's about to happen here on this training, God, that people are going to be inspired, not only inspired, but inspired to go deeper in their faith with you, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are the Jehovah Jireh, God, the, the provider. When we think about abundance, when we think about prosperity, God, I think about you at the center of that, that you are the great provider, God, and in and out through all of our stories that we get to give honor and glory to you, God. So bless this training, God. I pray over sound. I pray over um, all the technology here that it runs smoothly, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, God. So I just thank you, Lord. Uh, bless Cafe. Bless Nick. Bless this time together. We lift every single person up here today. In your mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's go. Let's get it. All right. Well, hey, so for those of you that don't know, know Coffee Anderson, he is uh, a local to Texas. He's uh, a little bit north of here, Prosper, Texas. He is somebody who has taken his God-given dream, his God-given assignment, put it into massive action. He's uh, crushed it on YouTube. He's got uh, a record label deal. He's been touring the country performing. Uh, he was just at the Grand Ole Opry performing, Come on. which is incredible. He's got a Netflix show. The list goes on and on. So would you help us welcome Kofi Anderson? Let's go. Come on. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. What up, what up? Good morning. Good to see you. You too. Oh you goodness. too. Thank you all for having me. Let me Definitely. cut this. Okay, now we're good. Morning. <laughs> hey, roll call. Where you from? Put your city. Rep your city. Write it down. What's up? Let's go. Look oh. at this. Y'all fancy. Look at how y'all let me in something this nice. <laughs> what? I'm used to dirt on the floor, rib bones, barbecue, chicken wire. Look at y'all. This is... What, what y'all are spoiled. Whoever's watching this, y'all are spoiled. I'm just letting you know right now. All right, Cooperstown, Knoxville. Look oh, at y'all. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Bethlehem. Talk to Jesus' mama. <laughs> where where y'all? Port Huron. Okay. I was just in Port Huron three days ago. Oh, man. There's nothing to do in that town. <laughs> I was there for four is. hours. I feel like I was there a week and a half. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> London. Okay, Washington State. Good to see y'all. All right, what's oh, up? Amazing, amazing. I'm going to catch you on Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so. every woman in my life leaves. Hey, hey, they all run away. <laughs> what I love Joking, when uh, Coffee rolled up, uh, he's, you know, his assistant says, all right, he's pulling up. And then I look outside and he's helping my neighbor carry her water. I'm like, this is, this is just, this oh, is what man. happens in the great state of Texas with yeah. Coffee. There, there was an older lady and, and she was trying to hold a whole case of water. Poor baby. <laughs> it, it wasn't her day. So I, I just walked it over to her house for That's awesome. We got to be man. our brother and sister's keepers. That's right. Yeah. For real. Well, dude, I'd love for you to share. I, I'd love to take everybody through the fruit of the harvest season that you're in, right? So okay. I'd love for people to get the snapshot of where you're at now, and then we'll wind it back and talk yeah. about the journey. So tell us about some of the latest successes and what's cooking in your world. Um, well, the of course, Netflix has been mm. great to us. Roma Downey, who was the angel on Touch by an Angel. Oh, yeah, yeah. She helped create uh, our show, Country Ever After. Mm. 
And it's like happy ever after, but country ever after. And country ever after is the only reality show top to bottom you can watch with your family mm. and not worry about the content. Yeah. And we believe in three things. Uh, it's faith, family, and freedom. And I think that we make no bones about speaking up or defending any of those three. Yeah. And uh, which is crazy because now in a lot of mainstream media circles that that's rare. Mm. It's rare. And when you have it so good that you complain about how good it is, you haven't been anywhere else. Yeah. When I hear people complain about how bad America is, you've never traveled outside <laughs> of the country. You haven't been on a mission trip. Yeah. Because there's some really, really bad places that don't even, on our worst day, it wouldn't be their best. Mm. Yeah. And so uh, we have to remember that. We have to keep speaking up about the great country we live in, the, the freedom of worship, and um, the opportunity of capitalism. Capitalism yeah. is the greatest gift that America can give to its people. Now, have there been hurdles for certain cultures? Yes. Have there been hurdles for certain generations? Absolutely. What does that have to do with you today? Mm. What does that have to do with you today? Yeah. Because my grandparents and my mother had to deal with segregation. I don't. There's not a place I can't walk in and go get a client. Somebody yeah. lying. Yeah. If you are where you are and you're not happy with it, it's your fault. There's information you can get now. Yeah. I'm over excuses. Yeah. I'm over blame. It's personal responsibility. When you can open up your phone and broadcast a video that can go worldwide, yeah. it's your fault that your business doesn't have uh, the visibility that it does. So it's not just about marketing. It's about responsibility. And, it, and it's called going into the triage. Mm -hmm. So let's go into the triage of, of where you are. If, if your leg started falling off right now <laughs> and it, this thing fell and you're bleeding. <laughs> if we take you to the emergency room, they're still going to ask for your blood pressure and your temperature. Mm -hmm. So many times we want to focus on what we have immediately, but we don't look at what's the temperature. What's the blood pressure of my marriage? What's the temperature? What's the blood pressure of my business? Where am I really at? Yeah. Nobody wants to look at where they're losing. And that's the difference between winning and maintaining. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So when I first started, I borrowed a guitar from a girl I was dating his daddy. And now what year is this? This was, oh shoot, <laughs> 99, 99, 98. Okay. 99, 98. I was a freshman in college and, uh, uh, oh, thank you. I look at all the comments. I love it. <laughs> so I was in college and I was just bored and I just started doing campfire worship. Every move I make, I'm making you all those, you know, types of songs and waves of mercy and, um, Holiness, it's all those, uh, the basics. Yeah. Remember when worship music actually had scriptures in it? And it wasn't a, a poem to Jesus <laughs> yeah. is my boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so, what, <laughs> yeah, it, the scripture is weird how when you put that in the song, it just makes the song better. But churches don't do that because they're allergic to the word of God. So it, it's one of those things where you go, man, let me look and see. I started singing and my dorm room filled up, the hallway filled up, wow. the bottom of the dorm filled up. And I realized that, that I had a gift. And the word says that your gift will make room for you. See, there's a lot of people that have talents, but they don't have gifts. Mm. See, God is no respecter of persons, but the anointing is. Everybody can come to the Lord, doesn't mean that you don't get God's consent, yeah. which is the definition and the lexicon of God's anointing, it's consent for what you're doing. Mm. So there's a lot of people that are talented, but they're not anointed. Or, or they're talented, but they're not gifted. And when you have both, you got to run with it. They yeah. got to have both. Yeah. You got to run with it. What would you say to somebody who um, is trying to figure it out? You know, they're, they're, maybe they're spinning their wheels, they're right. struggling, and they want more. Like if they're here with us, right. you know, our company is called Life on Fire, and it's about living your life to the fullest. Absolutely. And taking the, the anointing from yeah. God and the gifts and talents and putting it into fast, fast action. Um, so what would you say to somebody that's still trying to figure it out? Like, man, I've tried this, I've tried this, but right. they don't feel like they're in that groove of their purpose. Right. Okay. So if, if you are trying to figure this thing out, there's two things I want you to do. Um, number one, take notes in your phone real quick. Uh, the, the first thing is, is stop comparing because once you start comparing mm -hmm. the, the, the joy of your blessing is taken off Instagram, TikTok, they've ruined our capacity of, of, of the attitude of gratitude. Because you look at someone, oh, well, they got a Rolls Royce. Oh, well, they got a bigger house. Oh, well, they got this. All of a sudden, that spirit of comparison takes away the joy of what God's given you to work with. Mm. So if you have 
a talent, like you said, someone is just starting out, get rid of comparison. Because even though we're running in the same race, you have your lane and I have mine. Catch that. We're, we're, we're on the same track, running the same race, but I'm in a different lane. You can't compare your lane to my lane. It'll never happen. Because if you're looking at a track, some people are tiered and they look like they're ahead at the very beginning, but actually they have longer to run if you do the yeah. math right. Yeah. But I need to stay in my lane because that's for me in my house. My lane is where I have to be. Yeah. So number one, get rid of comparison. Number two is what comes easy. And I know that sounds crazy. Is that what comes easy? What, why do we own aquariums? Because we like seeing fish swim. People pay good money to watch a fish swim. Why would they not pay you good money for what you already Come do? Yep. If you already have what already comes easy. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. Come on. Why am I going? <laughs> Let's go. Come on now. Come on now. The Lord uses simple things to confound the wise. I'm giving you word right now. If this is already easy, I am paying to watch a fish swim. People pay to watch a singer sing. It's my gift. It's my anointing. It's my calling, but I'm in my own lane. I can't run your race. Why would I look sideways? Mm. That's good. So many people get tripped up on it and you know, they, they find themselves in a situation where they're comparing the size of their business. And oftentimes, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, they talk about, oh, well, this person, they hit, you know, 10 million or a hundred million. They don't know the sacrifice. They don't know what it did to their family. Right. And it's almost like having a lot of empo employees or gross revenues, this badge of honor. Whereas, you know, what we like to look at is health, wealth, love, and faith, you know, and looking yes. at what's the, the real fruit in your life, not just money, Come not on. just your business. You know, and we see so many people, we got to get them off that track of comparison. So that's good. Right. It's no, that, 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 that spirit of comparison will ruin yeah. you. Yeah. It, it'll ruin you. And so I can't run your race. Mm -hmm. I can't look at your life because I don't know what type of fertilizer, I don't know what type of crap that has been put in your ground to make that fruit come up. Yeah. I can't judge that. I can't judge that. Now, what would you say to somebody who's, uh, struggling with motivation, maybe that they're just, they feel burnt out, you know, um, what would you say about just getting that fire lit and getting them going into action? Uh, well, I, I think you need to, sometimes you may need to change your environment. Mm -hmm. I, had, I have, um, a friend of mine that, uh, used to, um, for example, she was a dancer. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, you need to be a choreographer. And she didn't know if her choreography was good enough because she's always been a dancer. Mm. So a lot of times when all of a sudden you have to elevate your calling, there is an uncomfortable comfort of being exactly where you were. Mm. So you can't let the uncomfortable comfort take away the progress of your future. I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I'm, ah, but I know this place. Yeah. I've heard people say, oh, well, I'd rather sleep with the snake I know than find another one. I disagree. I don't want to sleep with a snake. <laughs> right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So sometimes you may have to change your environment. Once this dancer went outside of L.A. and started choreographing and meeting people, people were like, you're so good. Oh, my gosh, this is amazing. All of a sudden, the belief was like, well, maybe I am a choreographer. Yeah. Maybe I am. And now she's a hip hop choreographer for the Dallas Cowboys. No way. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's interesting because that, um, that concept of the imposter syndrome of somebody not feeling good enough, but in that story, it took somebody else, you know, to nudge her yeah. and to believe in her. Right. And you said your environment is everything. And uh, yes. Pastor Keith Kraft, your, your, you know, your alignments will d determine your assignments. Oh, yeah. And so it's so cool and that a monster. He is. He's a oh, beast. He's a monster. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. He's both. a gorilla. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's just incredible. You know, as coaches, we just so deeply believe in coaching. And, you know, that's how we got our start is we had a great coach that poured into, into us and it Good. changed our lives. Wow. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, let's talk about coaches, mentors, people who have been just critical, pivotal on your you know, journey to success. I think 
there's so many in so many di different areas. Yeah. And I think I think my dad was was number one. Um, what, what, number one was was my old man, and he always told me everybody puts their pants on the same way, one leg at a time. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to talk to anybody. And it wasn't that I was downplaying someone's greatness. Because I know people say, oh, they put their parents on just like you. I can walk by them and ignore them. And I have people that try to walk by me or, oh, he ain't nothing. Maybe. 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 But also, then they'll come up and be like, hey, I got a few questions. Well, you just played me a minute ago. <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, you want to ask me how to help. So it's not in that aspect. It's in the aspect of don't be afraid to talk to anyone. Everybody puts their parents on one leg at a yeah. time just like you do. But you have to honor their success and what they've done. But also, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. I think that was the biggest thing I caught from, from, from Paul Paul was, don't be afraid to ask. And because of that, there wasn't any mentors around me when I grew up with what I did. Mm -hmm. So my, my mentor is Barnes & Noble. And I know that sounds crazy, but I needed information. I learned how to play guitar from a book. No way, wow. I, I taught myself in my dorm room. And I had a guy named Michael Norwood who came in and showed me GCD and E minor and showed me the shortcut. And thank you so much, Michael, for that. But I mean, I learned from a book and I still read. And my wife's like, oh, my little nerd. If I see a Barnes and Noble, <laughs> I'm going to go just to go, just to be around it, to look. And, and, and marketing is something when I read Seth Godin's book, Purple Cow. Oh, yeah. Great book. I'm actually in Malibu at Mark Burnett's house. Every celebrity that's anybody, you couldn't even take your phones in. I mean, Jamie Foxx, Leo, Gaga, Cindy Crawford, Eddie Vedder, RuPaul was DJing. It's unbelievable. I'm, I, we're, we're here, and I see a guy, and I walk up, and I'm like, Seth, bro, your book changed my life. And the guy goes, which one? I sell billions. And I'm like, and somebody hits me like, dummy, that's Bezos. <laughs> So I thought Jeff Bezos <laughs> was awesome. Seth Godin. That's great. And I'm like, my bad. My. You take, you, you're cool all, too. All, all your boxes just fill up my porch because of my wife has a problem with the buy now button. Nice to meet you. And we laughed about it. Oh, man. And I, but I think if you don't have people around you that are specifically in that arena, find another way to learn. Mm. And Barnes & Noble was big for me. Um, Tom Winters, who was a lawyer for Bishop T.D. Jakes. I was singing in Tulsa at a church. The pastor stole money. The church shut down. The bishop was arguing with all this craziness. And Tom Winters pulled me in his office, gave me a $2,000 check, and was like, you need to go to L.A. and go sing. I heard you were praying about it. Here's your money. Go move. Your talent's bigger than here, and you'll need this drama. Wow. That's crazy. And how long were you in L.A.? 14 years. 14, okay. 14 years. In that environment, did that, uh, would you say, I mean, in terms of being oh, a performer, I mean, first of all, get to LA. L LA. LA is a shell of what it used to be. Mm -hmm. They trashed it, they ruined it. They ruined it. Ruined the state. And still trying to, by the way. I was there, Cuba Gooden Jr.'s brother was, was my neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon T. Jackson, who was, who was um, he was in Tropic Thunder, had okay. given rise to auditions. Aisha Curry, her name was, wasn't last name, was Steph Curry's wife. Okay. Lived across the hallway. And then you had all of the Vine talent, all of the Instagram and TikTokers lived in our building. Um, a buddy of mine helped start Twitch. Oh, wow. Because his last yeah. job, he was like, we stream live. Let's stream video games live. They started laughing at him. They create Twitch. He cashes out a <laughs> 17 bill. Sometimes being around like-mindedness, that's why coaching groups, entrepreneur groups, they work. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't, I can't talk boss talk to an employee. Yeah. I can't talk chief conversations to the Indians. So I need to have boss talk. That's why pastors have pastors. Yeah. Tommy Barnett is, is one of my big mentors in ministry. Okay. And in just expanding your territory. I think he's one of the greatest to ever do it yeah. in American history, by the way, he is Bishop T.D. Jakes's pastor. Mm. Yes, your favorite pastors have pastors because <laughs> they need them. Yeah. Because boss talk only needs to be done with other bosses. Yeah. That's good. It's so key. There's so many challenges that you've got to get out of your head, get in front of other people, get the right feedback, the right wisdom. And I just love that anything in life, 
there's always somebody who has gone before you. Unless you're an inventor, it's there's always somebody who's been there before you. They know the landmines, they can right. navigate it. Um, so that's that's been huge. Um, I'd love to have you share a little bit about um, uh, on the marketing side. Okay. You know, so I you know I watched. Give know, us some, some likes. Give us some, some hits. When you comment, said y'all disappearing. Come on, <laughs> come on. Is this still going? Oh, it's 58 new messages. Hit that. Boom. There we go. Oh, there Let's we go. 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 Um, so on the marketing side, so, you know, we teach a lot of online marketing in, and um, that's one thing I feel like you've done really well. Thank is, you. It seems like you've, you've kind of taught yourself marketing too. Right. You know, so tell us about that experience of learning marketing and, and what's working the best for you and, and what could you share with, with the um, Life I think, fan? well, number one, now, what line of work are you in? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're business coaches for experts, authors, speakers, and coaches. Lord have mercy. We teach people how to write books. We teach people how to speak on stages. Right. Yeah. I think one of the one of the biggest things for me was how to was how I built my business. Mm -hmm. The second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. Yeah. I'm gonna give you some facts. Second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. People search YouTube for how to. Mm-hmm. When I started leading worship and playing, I would teach people how to play guitar. Go, here, good, grab that real quick. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Y'all gonna see the reel today. <laughs> All right, here we go. I didn't know this in tune no more. All right, cool. That'll work. Um, so, when I first started... I would say, hello, this is Cafe with the song of the day. The song of the day is every move I make, I'm making you play G, C, D. Hey, and if you like my music, click like uh, on, uh, below and there's a link. And I sound way better on the album than I do live. So here we go. Every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. And that was what it was. So me teaching them. Yeah. Number one, what they came for. Now, all of a sudden, I'm a guru in their eyes because I'm teaching them the how-to. So now I'm already here and they're here. So what you want in marketing is you want to establish that you have a different view than the people that you're serving. Mm. So I'm here. I play the song. Thank you so much. Click subscribe. Bam. Now, all of a sudden, their followers will learn more, which is going to give me more ad revenue. Yeah. And... If, if you like what you hear, I want to come sing for you guys live, click on the link below, send me an email, whatever. And I will always put my email. I need to have contact information. Anytime you go to these conventions, hey, here's my card. Here's this. Here's my yeah. video. Here's this. Who cares? I need their information. Yeah. It's still the I'm. I passed out a thousand of this. I passed out all my pamphlets. Yeah, that's cool. I got 10,000 cards. Oh, I have a million followers. Great. I got 100,000 customers. My month looked different than yours. Yeah. And so so much of what we teach is about the lead magnet and, and having people opt in, building your email list. It's like, uh, you know, for us on social, Megan and I, we don't do a ton on social. So we get basically judged by that. Meanwhile, it's like we were like Tony Robbins, number one affiliate, you know, in the world because we built up a customer list. Come on. And we did exactly. I love that you're sharing that because you don't really think of a musician teaching how to and adding value in that way. You know, I just for my own for me personally, I just I didn't realize that that was a big part of, of the rise. And so that out of that, it gave me. Uh, hit the more messages. We want to see what's coming oh, up. Yeah, we got fireballs. I like that. <laughs> out of that. <laughs> Now I've I've given them information. Yeah. Now they're getting the subscriber. That my lead magnet was information. Yeah. I will always have a lead magnet if I'm teaching how to. Yeah. Look at how much our education system has been attacked with now you got weirdos teaching babies yeah. about sexuality in kindergarten, first grade, and alternative. It's what insane. are we doing? So if you think education doesn't matter, you're nuts. And everybody else knows the secret that you don't. So number one, teach how to. You have to also lead because now we're here. It's mm -hmm. called leverage. We're at the guru point. If I'm selling myself, I would be at these conventions. Um, say you would come up and you're looking at my booth. Mm -hmm. Let's just go booths for a minute. Yep. You're looking at my booth. 
and you're just looking around. I say, hey, I'm Cafe. Thank you so much for coming by. What's your name? Nick. Cool. When did, do you have a fair festival? What do you have? Uh, we have an event coming up. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Oh, when is it? July 21 to 24, Abundance. Oh, yeah. uh, amazing. Okay, yeah. um, what do y'all need? How can I help? Shoot, we, uh, we'd love to sell more tickets. We'd love oh, to... Oh, now see, now, look, watch this. Yeah. How can I help? Yeah. What did it do? It, you looked at every flaw. Mm. We want to sell more tickets. We want to fill... Yeah. You're telling me all of your flaws, yeah. which all of a sudden puts you in a vulnerable state. It's easy for me to sell someone that already knows that they're in a vulnerable state. Yeah. Guru level. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I can help sell tickets. Like have you on stage, be a speaker, performer, boom, ticket sales go up. Right. And then there's a transaction, there's a deal relationship right. built. And so yeah. when it came to getting, what, selling up contracts, everybody in the, in the music business had this, um, these papers that were like 10, 11 pages. What do you need for a contract? I need a date, time, yeah. location, price, your signature mine. All of my contracts had six things on them. That was it. People are like, oh, this is a one-page contract? We don't have to deal with an agent? No, you don't. Oh, okay, great. You deal directly with Cafe Global. Mm. So what we did, we made a small business operate and make big moves. Wow, That's smart. I can always use a tugboat to go around a bay way faster than a cruise ship. Everybody wants a cruise ship or a yacht. Give me a tugboat. Give me a tugboat. Because I can go get food. I can go get water. I can supply. I can do this. You have got to be able to move quick. Speed equals money. Yeah. So however you can make it go faster, faster speed. We have an affiliate program. He doesn't have to go recreate what Tony Robbins has already made. Just go sell what he already has to people that want it. Yeah. Number three, I look for people that are looking for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, y'all better put some fire on. I look for people that are looking for me. Whew. I'd rather go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated. I'm, so if I'm at a convention and there's a thousand people walking by and they got one guy that goes, huh, hey, I'm Cafe, where are you from? Fair Festival, what do you need? How can I help? I'm diving into them. Yeah. Do y'all like country music? Oh, great. Okay, what do you need? Uh, we, Friday and Saturday night, you need someone to headline? You need someone for Saturday night? Okay, cool. Well, let me give you a 15% discount. You book Friday and Saturday, and you don't have to worry about anybody. We have a 90-minute, high-energy, family-friendly country music show that sells beer with the best of them. Does that sound interesting to you? Great, okay, here. 50% deposit, one-page contract. It's only six signatures, and the date is yours. Yeah, we can set it up now. Great, awesome. Yeah. Thousand people still walking by, but I just made a sixty thousand dollar transaction. Yeah. Because I'm looking for the one, and now I have their contact information. I I, uh, I saw on, on a YouTube video about you mentioned going where you're celebrated versus tolerated, and uh, and going to certain. Uh, I think it was maybe Memphis or, or Nashville, and you know choosing other spots. Right. Um, that just and tell us about that. So okay, so it, so. Wherever there is an abundance of people that do what you do, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's called red water to me. When you go and throw bait out and all the sharks are eating it, it's, the water's all red. There's only scraps. There's parasite fish. There's trash fish eating up all the junk. I'd rather go to where the blue water is. Yeah. There ain't no more, nobody's eating over here. So in Nashville, when you sing, they give you, for four hours of singing, 800 bucks. To most people working a job as, as a construction worker, great. Hey, that, that, I, I get it, it's $200 an hour. Wow, it's good money. No, it's not. Not when they're selling beer, tickets, shows, VIPs, there's a lot. I would rather go to Paris, Texas. Mm -hmm. I'd rather go to Medill, Oklahoma, where they say, we got $40,000, and you can be the headliner. How big is your town? Well, we've got 7,000 people. Great, but we have a family-friendly show. I'm gonna sing happy birthday. I'm gonna give you a free video. Hey, this is Cafe Anderson. I will be in Medill, Oklahoma. Can't wait to see you guys there. September 7th at 8 p.m. downtown in the parking lot of the Ford dealership. Click on the link below and get you some tickets. God bless, bye. Now, all of a sudden, I've sent them a commercial. Yeah. Because they stink in social media. <laughs> so now they got a show, yeah. a meet and greet, and they got a Facebook commercial they can blast out to the 6,000. 
I don't have to be the biggest fish. I just got to be the biggest one in that aquarium. Mm. So in Maydale, Oklahoma, when we hit the town, 3,000 people showed up of the six. Wow. Dang. <laughs> That's awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then we walk away with $48,000 and we only played 75 minutes. No. Oh, you go to Nashville. You go to Nashville, they played for four hours and they had to split 800 between five people. Mm. I'd rather go where I'm celebrated. There, there may be... Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm raising th I'm raising a son and three girls. I'd rather her go with a guy that honors her, loves her, respects her, always sees a door that he don't want her to open because he got it instead. Then the guy that has a nice truck that ignores my baby. I want her to go where she's celebrated, honored, respected, loved, thought of. Come on now, <laughs> yeah. come on now. Yeah, it doesn't change. The difference is that you haven't set boundaries for your respect level. Boundaries give you freedom. Whole nother conversation. That, that's a good topic right there. I Whole think nother conversation. There's so many entrepreneurs and we've been on, I mean, we have, you know, definitely grinded and, you know, paid dues. Um, I, I love to work. I love what we get to do. I love our clients. Oh, I, I, dude, I could, and, work, I could work 23 hours a day. Yeah, exactly. But, like, for real. but I'd love for you to break down how you look at boundaries because there's so many entrepreneurs that you wake up one day and you look back and you think, oh my gosh, you know, I don't see my kids or I don't have time for myself or my health is not where it should be or whatever that situation is. Uh, so what would you say about the boundary conversation and how to establish them? What are a few that you do? When we were filming Country Ever After, I was caregiving, working, breadwinning, helping with babies, uh, mentoring, making content with Billie Jean, <laughs> uh, recording a new album, all these things because I knew that the show was going to make us go crazy. So I always prepare first. Yeah. I knew I needed more content, things that would bring us more opportunity. My wife and I decided to run a race against each other on the show. And mind you, she's a marathon runner. And a, and a professional dancer. I, I'm an ex-basketball player that now stands and does this for a living. It, my lungs aren't even close to ours. I got smoked in the race. But at the end of it, I said, with all of the responsibilities that are on me, I can't neglect myself. I can't neglect my health. Mm. So my boundaries became, I had to set a certain time for me to work so that I could optimize my time of working and I could also take care of my health and I also cultivate our relationships and help raise my babies. Mm -hmm. Because even though I was providing for them, when I was there, I wasn't there. Yeah. Because my phone was taking precedent. Are you actually present? Walk us through a typical day. Oh man, um, I'm an early riser, so I get up. Okay. Um, check emails, look at bank account statements. No, what time? So we can know where uh, waking up what time? Uh, I'm a, I'm a six, okay. 6 a.m., 7.30, in that hour and a half. But um, I wake up and um, get myself together. First thing, I, I brush my teeth. I, <laughs> I can't drink coffee or eat with stank breath. And if you do, you're a different type of breed, and I don't want anything to do with your voodoo. I need people with fresh breath drinking coffee and eating breakfast. Um, I do that first of all. And then I check, I check our bank statements because I want to mm -hmm. make sure where my money is going. I think you have to be a good steward of what God has given you. Mm -hmm. And like we, we worked with Hootsuite and the price was $850 for the year. Well, they charged us for two years. Hold on. Yeah. You wouldn't have seen that. You wouldn't have seen that. And so uh, this happened just yesterday. Mm. I'm like, come on, y'all. It's a big company. They should get that right. It, it, yeah, for real. You got to double down it, on it, me. Hootsuite used to be, we used to pay $7.99 a month. A month. Yeah. Now it's eight fifty. Yeah. Like, come on. Don't get me wrong, we'll make that back in a few hours, but yeah. it's just the fact of being a good suit of what God has given you. Mm -hmm. And so then it's waking up, and now it's changed because the kids are out for summer. Mm -hmm. So I kind of go in and try to clean up the backyard and see what those things look like. And, and then I look at my calendar because uh, Natalie, who I hired, has really scheduled out my day. Mm -hmm. Because I was doing so much with scheduling and with being on the phone with other people, I had to hire that out. So I could have freedom because the more money you get, the, 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 the less time you have, or you get more money instead of having money debt. Now you got time debt. Yeah. 
you're going to pay somehow. Now, uh, I'd love for you to share your perspective on why hiring an assistant is one of the first best hires. Uh, we often recommend that as well. Just you know, there's so many different things going on in business, but having you can't an assistant... afford not to have help. Mm -hmm. You can't afford not to have help. I need someone that's going to schedule. And if there's an awkward conversation about money, she doesn't have a problem having it. Because mm. if it was up to me, I, I have a ministry heart. I'm like, yay, I'll come <laughs> sing at your event for $7 and a warm Dr. Pepper. Yay, God's going to bless it. I know you're trying. Yay. No, she's like, uh-uh. For him to be away from his wife, his children, his time, for all the work that he's given in, for all the expertise, for all the information, you're going to pay. Yeah. Or we will find someone else that will because we get 50 booking requests a week. Nice. Wow. We've never cold called for anybody. We don't have to. Mm -hmm. Not if the windows of heaven are open. I feel like it's going to fall on you. Yeah. I love, I love to uh, talk about money. We have a lot of, uh, we work with faith-based entrepreneurs, Christians. The topic of money is often uh, met with some resistance, uh, people feeling guilty about. Um, I, I think it just. Go to comments. I think it's. Partly ask ask due us some to, questions about money. Yeah, I mean, we've had people with money blocks, people that, you know, think that they feel guilty to make money, maybe that uh, things that their parents have shared over the years. Someone uh, said how to charge for your calling. Mm -hmm. um, what is your time worth? And if you actually add up your time um, and your purpose, there is a price on that. Mm. There is a price on that because you have this illusion that you have more time. Yeah. And so don't worry about money, but be a good steward of it. Be a good steward of it and go with the rate or create your own rate. Mm -hmm. Because if you think your favorite worship leader is going to come to your house, come to your church and sing for free, you don't lost your mind. <laughs> you lost your mind. Yeah. And even pastors that go out and charge for preaching, they should. They put their time in. They put their prayer time in. They should be compensated. Mm -hmm. I think so. There are some that say, I don't charge. Just give an offering and God will provide. Great. That's how they flow. That's not me. It's a charge for me to walk in the door because other people are going to walk in the door that you can charge them. So there is a there is a amount of blessing that I would ask for. Don't be afraid to talk about money. And if money is your only, if money is your problem, you don't really have one. Money can be made. Money can be made. So when it comes to charging for your gift, great. That may not be something you feel comfortable doing. That's why, go back 10 minutes, yeah. you hire an assistant Come that on. feels comfortable with doing that because your first ministry is your house. So if I have to take care of my children, my wife, my groceries, my lights, my bills, that has to be compensated for. My first ministry is not your house, it's not your church, it's not your pastor's wife's heart that I'm gonna make feel warm. Mine is my own home. Yeah. It's my own home. So if I'm gonna take care of my children, there is a price associated with that. And if that's not in your budget, that's fine. They got people that'll fit your budget. I'm just not for you. Neither is Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. neither is Rolls Royce. But there was a reason why they cast lots for Jesus' clothes at the crucifixion because he was dressed fly. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I th yeah. a lot of people, you know, we've had uh, people that struggle just with that conf internal conflict of, you know, feeling guilty with charging or what? Am, what is it? So you know, get an assistant worth? that doesn't feel guilty. Yeah, that's good. Get an assistant that doesn't feel guilty because yeah. because money may not be your thing. Mm -hmm. And that's OK. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I have an assistant that goes and gets our check when we show up. Yeah, because I, I would rather shake their hand and give them a hug instead of getting a transaction. Yeah. I do. Yes. But we need that transaction to build the business, to, to build a company, to get the word out. Yeah. If I didn't, if I didn't like money, I would not have done a, a reality show with Netflix. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I didn't have a bigger vision, you wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. It's hard to affect change without money. Um, there's a quote our client <laughs> once said, right. um, you know, money's not important, but it touches everything in life that is right and if you look around it's like i mean you turn on the tv <laughs> stocks up and down i mean money is everywhere in life right and the faster we can make peace with that and then also i'll never forget i used to tell my coach i'm not motivated by money because I, I had this like humility i didn't want to feel like i was greedy you know i think a lot of people 
um, have this, if, if I make a lot of money, am I going to be greedy? Are people going to look at me differently? And, you know, he broke it down and he just said, you know, if you're not motivated by money, you're never going to have it. And I'm like, right. I don't want to be motivated by money because I don't want to be like that greedy person. And then he's like, well, let's put it in perspective. If you don't, you know, he basically asked me like, what my big vision is and how do I want to affect change? I'm like, well, I want to help serve entrepreneurs, help build the kingdom of God, get the name of Jesus in front of more people. And uh, he said, without money, you can't market. Without money, you can't do all these other things. And then he, um, then he said, who's your best friend? I said, uh, Adam Urak. And he's like, if his insurance dropped him and he's in the hospital and he needs a million dollars, how motivated are you to create money to go do that? And then it, something just popped and shifted. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to f- lose that, that humility I Come was on. putting on. And it's, instead, it's, it's, a, it's a front. Yeah. It's a front. And because yeah. people don't want to be perceived in a certain way, but money is a motivation. Yeah. We live in the greatest country on earth for capitalism. Go get it. Mm-hmm. There was a time when women couldn't vote. There were separate bathrooms. There were certain uh, water fountains. There were places that if you didn't have a certain last name, you couldn't get in. That is not this right now. We are in the greatest generation yeah. of wealth transfer in the history of the world. Why do you think people are trying to regulate the internet? Because Joe Schmoes are making real <laughs> money. Yeah. You're making real money. There's no reason in the world for me to not have a record deal and be number four on the country charts. If I would have put a no in front of that, people said, oh, well, a lot of black people don't sing country music. You're saying it wrong. <laughs> a lot of black people don't sing country music. Which means I'll be the only, I'll be one of the few. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Yeah. There were two guys that there was, it was a plane that landed in Australia and two shoe salesmen were on that plane. The door opened and the first guy opens the door and says, ah, he saw only Aborigines. He said, oh man, they don't wear shoes. He turned around and sat on the plane. Other guy gets out and goes, they don't wear shoes. Calls his boss. We're going to make a billy. <laughs> We're gonna make a billion because nobody here wears it. They're all gonna buy them. What's mm. your perspective? Yeah. Which I'd rather go where the blue water is. They don't wear it. There ain't a lot of black. That I'm in. I'm in. Mm-hmm. Because in the music industry, everybody pitched themselves out on the top of the ocean. Let's spread really thin, wide and thin, and see how much money we can make. The difference in my marketing is I'd rather go to a water well. You can have the ocean. You can fight the waves and the sharks. This water well, every time I dip, the water's cold. Every time I dip, it's clean. Every time I dip, it's fresh. Every time I go back to this well, there's a reason why Jesus was at the well doing ministry and walking on the water. Because one of them you actually get from and one of them you bypass as much as you can. If you can go deep in the audience you have, yeah. if you can go deep in the Come relationship on. you already have, if you can worry about your own wife. <laughs> Let's go. And not every freak on Insta. <laughs> That's so good. It's ideal target marketing Come is on everything. Now. It's everything in, in marketing and business. You know, if you're talking to the wrong people, you're not going to get paid what you're worth. And then, so in our world as um, experts, authors, speakers, coaches, the results are different too. You know, you could be the same coach and work with a more ideal target market the right well and have profoundly different impact, you Absolutely. know, just by shifting that target market. It's really cool to hear it from, you know, perspective, you know, in your industry. Um, so we got a few minutes Go to more left. more comments. Come more on. More comments. What do we got what, here? We are, we're missing everything. <laughs> Love the blue water. Let's go. Uh, I'd love to uh, have you share about faith. So that to me is, um, you know, it's something we're super passionate about. Right, right. I think it's amazing, you know, that you've got uh, Jesus front and center in your life and your family. Right. Um, but I'd love to hear about um, how faith has played a role in your success and, you know, what it looks like. How do you, how do you uh, worship God? I think, um, I think it has to be ingrained in everything. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you're perfect, but you got to try. And I know people that say, oh, well, I want to be a hypocrite. Well, if you're a hypocrite, at least you're trying. And if you had it all, if everything was already perfect, why would you need a savior? People always say, well, you know, God won't put more in than you can bear. Yeah, he will. Yes, he will. And that's not even scriptural. That's a proverb. Mm. Yes, he will. That's why you need the Lord. Because I can't handle it. This situation is so bad for me. I can't handle it. Well, that's why I need my faith. Yeah. This, this vision is too big for me. That's why we need faith. 
Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing about faith, they always talk about it small mustard seed. You can take a whole forest, you drop a spark in it, it'll burn that joker down. Mm-hmm. Faith will set a blaze on things that you never could. Yeah. You never could. And there's no appointment like a divine appointment. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> there's no appointment like a divine appointment. I was at, I was in a Chick-fil-A parking lot. And I don't, I don't endorse Chick-fil-A. I think they put trash in their chicken. And my, every time my son eats it, his nose bleeds because of the MSG. So Be we, better. We're no good, joke. Where's good chicken out here? Um, oh, man. We're, we're only a year and a half in. At, at your house. Um, <laughs> Popeyes will never go wrong. Get the red beans and rice. Get the thighs. Okay. Um, I, I think I, I was in the parking lot, and, and there was an elderly guy that couldn't make it around his car. He was having a heat stroke. And so I, it was a convenience store, Chick-fil-A convenience store, and a, it was a liquor store on this side. And the convenience store guy didn't want to help. The liquor store guy gets on the phone with call 911. I'm sitting with this older gentleman. We, we cut his car on, cut the heat on him, give him some water, Sprite, everything. The guy that helps, that says, listen, I will drive their car home because the old lady couldn't drive. He goes in the, in the ambulance. Mm. He says, I'll drive it. We sit and talk while the ambulance is showing up. He's a hit songwriter in Nashville. <laughs> he on. writes for Curb Records. What? I walk in and meet with him. I meet Jim Ed Norman, who played all the strings on Hotel California and produced the Eagles. Wow. Introduces me to Jen Johnson, who we did our joint venture deal. Jen Johnson introduces me to Jordan. Jordan is actually the manager of the Grand Ole Opry. I make my Grand Ole Opry debut. <laughs> Oh, By help, there's no appointment yeah, yeah. like a divine appointment. The problem is we don't ask the Lord to lead our day. Mm. We go, I'm going to lead. God, are you still here? I'm going to go this way. God, are you still here? Oh, God, why didn't you bless it? Because you followed your own way and the arms of flesh will fail you. Mm. But if he's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, that faith has to be the fuel. It has to be because every mountain that you think is too much Every forest that is in your way, one spark will burn the whole thing down. You can walk through it clean. Mm. I need a divine appointment. Yeah. So good. How about uh, for anyone that's in the Texas area, Elevate Life, Pastor Keith? Yeah. So how good is, how good is Pastor Keith I, and Elevate Life and Pastor I, I love I love Pastor Keith because uh, money is uncomfortable for people. It's not uncomfortable yeah. for him. It can't be. We need to be winning. We need to be the number one on the charts. You need to be the number one real estate agent. And nobody is pushing for greatness. In th- they're not forcing you to have greatness in the church. A lot of pastors don't. But Elevate Life, Keith does. I love yeah. that. And you look around the audience, it's all winners. Yeah. Everybody there is a monster in their field. I'm sitting with Ryan Stewman, Apex. Yeah. Mr. Hardcore Closer. David Harris is on this side of me. The voice of conservatism, period, yeah. on the planet. He gives you more, he gives you better news than Fox ever <laughs> will. So David, you got Weatherford, who Weatherford. is a health monster. <laughs> he looks like the Incredible Hulk with a mullet. You know what I'm saying? We're all in the yeah. same row yeah. listening to what Pastor Keith has to talk about because Eagles fly with eagles. I know a bunch of eagles that hang out with turkeys, but come Thanksgiving, the people that you're around, they'll, they'll get you caught up. Yeah. You're here to be cut off and you'll be on a plate. I need to fly high. If I'm the richest one in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Yeah. So good. Love Pastor Keith. Love Elevate. Um, a big part of moving out here is because of Weatherford. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Basically, you know, we're really good friends uh, in San Diego and um, I was at his house and he basically just started casting vision and he's like, man, if we're going to, if we're going to live our best life. If we're, if we're going to live all that God has for us, like who better than to be around Pastor Keith and Sheila um, to not just work, help people, impact lives, build the kingdom, make money, but to, to, to know how to do family right. right in the best way. You have to learn that balance Yeah, because success has never been taught before. Yeah. Think about this. Motivational speakers and, and mentors just got big because the rich weren't sharing their secrets. Name one music great in our history that shared how to sell music. 
think Garth is going to tell a young <laughs> up and coming guy how to sell records? You ever seen Diddy, Jay Z talk about how to sell it? They don't. Warren Buffett just started talking about this stuff. He didn't tell you about it before. Why would they share you their secrets? Because we have this crab in a barrel mentality mm -hmm. that, well, if I tell you this secret, you're going to take my money. You're going to take my clients. There is so much pie. Abundance, yep. There is so <laughs> much pie. I can give you the exact play-by-play -play of what I've done because, and I have. You still couldn't do it, and you still couldn't service enough people, and you still wouldn't take away from me. It just won't happen. Y'all, I'm telling you. Do you have the other computer you bring in here? Or everything froze? Everything froze. Oh, wow. Start it over. <laughs> it froze. The chat's still going. The chat's going. But the, um, the let me, uh, the old turn off, turn on. What is your, the other computer? Froze. Can you, oh, that one froze too? Yeah, that's how I knew it. Bro, we've never had the uh, Zoom freeze. <laughs> First time with Cafe Anderson. The chat is still going All right, let, let, let's read these. Tell the devil not to do it today. <laughs> Actually, that's frozen too. You working on that? Okay. Okay, okay. Bueller, Bueller? Yeah. Yay! Okay. All right, see if it's on. <laughs> see if it's on. Get off me, devil. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, hey, I know you got a you got a jam in a minute. Um, do you have a couple minutes? So we have uh, yeah. five minutes. We'll be at the hour mark. Um, what do you think about playing a little song, dude? Uh, of course. Maybe blast. Maybe. Oh man. Whatever you're thinking, dude. Whatever comes to mind. Let me grab this capo. You guys would like to hear Cafe sing? For those who come to our abundance event, he's going to be singing. He's going to be perform. Um, Performing and then also Talking. doing a keynote. So that's going to be epic. AbundanceEvent2022.com. What, what date is that? Uh, July 21 to 24. It's a four day event okay. right here in Dallas, Texas. You're performing on the 22nd. I'm the 22nd? He's July the 22nd. 22nd. Don't miss the 22nd. That's my mama's birthday. Rest in peace. <laughs> is it? Yeah. She was the best. Let me, um, yeah, I got a 12. Oh my gosh. Let me tune this guitar up. So, how did you hear about me? Let's see. I think um, first Megan actually just heard, found you on Netflix. Like it popped up as like a suggested show. Okay. And she was like, "Babe, you got to see this." And um, and just love the love who you are and your wife is. And and you know, then she's like, "They're local. They're in Texas." And then, you know, I was just talking with Weatherford, and he's like, "Man, you got to get to know Cafe." And then uh, we just looked at it and said, "You know what? Like, who better to to come bless everybody at Abundance?" with your performance, but also man, the you. keynote, dude. And, right. and the fact, we just love your values, man, who you are as a man, a person, a patriot. Appreciate so, it, bro. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness, there's so much. When I, when, I was, when I was starting out in the country, everybody tells you what you exactly have to do. And yeah, I got a tuner on my phone. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and so everybody was like, you gotta, you gotta know what to do. And so they were like, you gotta have a drinking song. And knowing that my dad has been 40 years sober. Wow. And, and, and I know what that, what that spirit can do to ruin a home, to ruin a house or to ruin a career. And I'm like, okay. But they were like, no, you gotta, you gotta have one. So this guy was like, hey, I wanna drink and be miserable. And I was like, what is a good, cause most of them have this almost inebriated <laughs> type. Yeah. And so I was like, huh. I was like, I saw you in Walmart. You were holding his hand. We've only been broken up for about a week and a half. Now I'm not jealous, I'm just telling you. You left me for him. The heartbreak, something <laughs> looked peculiar. And I was noticing. <clears throat> but your new boyfriend is ugly And I'm glad that he is Why don't y'all go get married And have some ugly kids <laughs> Hey! <laughs> so when you think about How can I make that for me? Yeah. How can I make it family friendly? Even though it has the same swag of one of those other ones It's funny mm -hmm. The punchline catches you 
but it's also on brand. Yeah. It's on brand. The moment you start running someone else's race, you get out of your lane, yeah. it's a foul. Let's go back. Let's go back. Run your race. And that went viral. People mm -hmm. loved it. Who hasn't had a breakup and you get dumped? <laughs> and, you, and it's like, hey, uh, hey, girl, I saw Derek at the store. He had a new woman with him. Was she hotter than me? Was she prettier than me? You know what I mean? Hey, I saw your girl. She got a new dude. Is this truck higher than mine? What kind of lift kit? What kind of rims? You know, you want to be the best they ever had. I, that's good Christian revenge. I don't want you to die. Just kiss somebody ugly until you die. You know what I'm saying? Can we, can we humanize the experience, but be who we are? Mm. Can you keep your witness, but then sell tickets? Yeah. That's up to you to figure out. And so it resonates. So the story, the pitch, staying in your lane, also adding that value, be a blessing. It makes a, it makes a big deal. So um, there's so many I want to play. And this is why y'all need to come to the conference. You got to come to the conference. Um, this song is called Blessed, B-L-E-S-S-E-D. And so the writer, of the, there's three writers of this, and all of them have served our country. One of them was battling throat cancer. And the Lord woke him up at 4 a.m. and said, be unlucky every single second every day. Be unlucky every single second every day. And so the acronym is BLESSED. B-L-E-S-S-E-D. Be unlucky every single second every day. And this song was for Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan wow. was going to cut it. They knew our story, saw the show. And they took it from Luke and gave it to me. Wow. Because of that, I believe in being a good steward of what God's given you. They gave me that song. I called the producer. We recorded it that night. We had it mixed the next day. Within 48 hours, it was completely finished and done. Oh, wow. That usually takes mo a month. We did it in 48 hours because I'm a tugboat. You could be the cruise ship. I'm the tugboat. Mm -hmm. I move I'm a water bug. I move faster. So because of that, when my Grand Ole Opry debut came, because of the divine appointment, come on, the, the divine appointment gave me the Grand Ole Opry debut. Those writers had never been to the Grand Ole Opry. Mm -hmm. The guy says, I'm not going to the Opry until one of my songs is there or an artist that recorded one of my songs is there. I walk into the building not knowing that they were there. Mm -hmm. Jordan from the Opry said, pray about what songs you want to do. I know you're a believer, so am I. Lord said, you're going to do Blessed and Mr. Red, White, and Blue. There's a circle at the Grand Ole Opry that came from the Ryman Theater. When the Ryman was flooded, the part that was floating was this piece of wood. When everything else goes down, <laughs> the piece that God has for you will be floating. They took that circle and put it at Opryland. So everything else is a dark brown except this light wood that has a light shining on it. It's amazing that what God has set aside for you is where everybody will stop and stand. Wow. Because holy ground is holy ground. Mm. That circle, they had the microphone in it. I go to sound check. Nobody's in the place. I've had people give me money, let me sleep on their couch, donated their cargo trailer so I can carry my equipment, helped me get gas money, bought my albums, bought my shirts, came to my shows, supported me, prayed for Chrysilla through everything they were going through. Guess what? I'm going to step in that circle without them? No, get my microphone out of there. Put it right here. Because if we do it together, we're going to do the whole thing together. I walk out. I point to heaven. I said, thank you to the Lord. Thank you to my mama. And when my whole family was there, and all my fans, then I stepped in that circle. I stepped in that circle. Come on. This old truck seen better days. Got a little rust on that tailgate. It still gets me down the interstate. One mile at a time. I got a couple bills that are overdue. Still got some dreams that ain't come true. But I got a girl I can hold on to with her by my side. I'm B L E W -S, S E D. I 
alive and well in the land of the free. I ain't rich, but I got everything I need. So I work hard, play hard, pray hard too. Cause you get what you give, and I always give my best. Then I let the good Lord handle the rest. Man, I'm blessed. So that writer was there. <laughs> um, the people that wrote with him were there. Wow. And he stands up. And when I walked out, there was a standing ovation. When I got done with Bless, there was a standing ovation. The record label partner that I had didn't feel comfortable with me going to radio because of my conservative values. I stood up and said, Grand Ole Opry, thank you for letting me sing my brand of country music. Because you got to give honor to those that were Come already on. there. Yeah. I said, faith, family, and freedom is what I sing about. I'm not going to run from that. People start going crazy. I said, my daddy gave his hearing in the U.S. Air Force. The song is for him. I said, I sang this at Chris Kyle's gravestone dedication. Who the movie American Sniper was about for his widow and his children. Because it's the guts and it's the glory. A hundred stripes, a hundred stories. It's the Pledge of Allegiance on the 4th of July It's some handwritten letters from home It's some sleepless nights alone It's his newborn baby he left with his wife He's Mr. Red or White and Blue Lay down his life Mr. Red or White and Blue For these stars and stripes Red or White and Blue to stand on the front line You'll pay the ultimate price Mr. Red, White and Blue Thank you, man. <laughs> That's so good. Third man. standing ovation. Oh my gosh. First time it ever happened in Opry history. I don't say that to impress <laughs> you, but to impress upon you. If I was running in anyone else's lane, yep. I would have to fit their armor. When Goliath came, King Saul was like, I got armor for you. Take my sword, take my shield, take this, take these boots, put this helmet on. I can't fit. David said, I haven't tried these things. These things haven't been proven from my testimony because they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You may not know every Bible verse, every book of the Bible, but I just need you to know what his grace, his blood can do in your own testimony. I need you in your lane, Kafe. So when you step in the place that's already been lit Come for you, on. the anointing shows yes. up. Man, that is so I good. need you to run your own. Yeah. So then when I went to the Opry, I brought my drummer and I brought my fiddle player because I know these other musicians are great. They're amazing. They played with everybody from George Strait to Brooks and Dunn to Charlie Pride. I get it, but that's not my people. Give me my seven smooth stones from the river that I know hmm. of. Give me my slingshot hmm. and give me space. Give me my slingshot. <laughs> Give me this piece of wood with these six strings. Give me a microphone and get out the way. Mm -hmm. Let me hear from him. We don't have a set list for my shows. People go, oh, well, what songs are you going to sing? I don't know. Let me get there and feel it out. Because mm -hmm. I'm the atmosphere bringer. So as long as I'm a bend in the river, people get what they came for. Anyway, y'all listen. <laughs> Come on. Come That's on now. That's so good. That's so good. Well, hey, uh, we're, we're going to wrap for today. Um, I would just say. Uh, get tickets. Get tickets to Abundance. It is AbundanceEvent2022.com. We already have 450 people registered. We're going to pass 500. We're going to sell it out. It's going to be closed out. Um, so at Abundance. Buy tickets um, for other people. Yeah. If you have people in your life that don't, that you want them to see the vision, buy them a ticket. Invest in your circle. Mm. Invest in the people around you. Buy them a ticket. That's what I need you to do. I, it, it, because if... The people aren't around you that you need, raise them up. Yeah. Raise them up. 
Raise them up. There's somebody young that's hungry, that's struggling, buy them a ticket. Because I need more like-mindedness around me. That's why you see birds fly in a V. Because once the leader gets tired, he can start back. Somebody else can get in. I need like-mindedness for us to fly high, light, straight, and effectively. Mm. Buy tickets. So it's Abundance Event 22, 2022.com. And for you guys, uh, what we is have it said again? <laughs> Abundance Event 2022.com. Okay. Golly. And uh, we, have, um, we actually have a promo code, Happy Client. So if you're here, you're one of our clients in the Life Empire family. So Happy Client gets you a discount. And then for our coaching clients, Accelerate Mastermind, as you guys already definitely know, you've got a promo code to bless others uh, as a part of the package. You got extra tickets. So like Coffee said, bring people. And then Coffee, where can they find you on Instagram, YouTube? Oh, it's at Coffee Anderson on Instagram, at Coffee Anderson on Facebook. And Coffee is spelled C-O-F-F-E-Y. Um, Coffee Southern Man is my YouTube channel. And then our reality show is Country Ever After on Netflix. And um, if you want to go to, the, to watch my next Grand Ole Opry performance, it is July 15th. In That's Nashville, sweet. Tennessee, it'll be myself, Lauren Elena, Billy Ray Cyrus, and Torin Wells. Christian Singer is making his Opry debut. Come on. So we're going to go pull for him and, and, and yell for him. So it's going to be great. Awesome. Well, hey, give some love to Cafe Online. We love you, Life and Fire family. We'll talk to you and see you soon. Yep. God bless you. See you guys. Booyah. Awesome, man. Dude, that was so good, man. That was awesome. I love when you get fired up, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs>